Dr. Sage here, back with the third out of five videos on aerobic cellular respiration. Last time we talked about the first main stage of aerobic cellular respiration, which is called glycolysis. Today what we're going to discuss is the minor stage called pruvate oxidation, and the second main stage called the citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle. So at the end of glycolysis, that one glucose molecule had been converted into two molecules of pruvate. That happened inside the cytoplasm or cytosol. The pruvate then enters into the mitochondria, and where it goes into the mitochondria is inside the matrix of the mitochondria. So recall the mitochondria has two membranes, as an outer membrane and an inner membrane which folds on itself. Because it has two spaces, the space between the outer and the inner membrane is called the intermembrane space. The space inside the inner membrane, like the space here, that's called the matrix. So the pruvate molecules are going to enter into the matrix of the mitochondria, and that's where pruvate oxidation is going to happen. Pruvate oxidation takes pruvate that was made during glycolysis and turns it into acetyl-CoA. The reason for that is because the first main stage, glycolysis, ends with pruvate, but the second main stage, citric acid cycle, needs to start with acetyl-CoA. It can't start with pruvate. So pruvate oxidation takes pruvate and turns it into acetyl-CoA so you can then feed that acetyl-CoA into the citric acid cycle. Recall that during glycolysis you take glucose, which is a molecule that has six carbons, and you basically break it in half into two molecules that each have three carbon. Those three carbon molecules are called pruvate. Okay, so this would represent pruvate with its three carbon atoms. Now remember, one glucose is going to give you two molecules of pruvate. Now, during pruvate oxidation, basically the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to take one of these carbons and break it off from the other two carbons. And this carbon has attached to it two oxygens. So you're going to break off a carbon with two oxygens or a CO2, carbon dioxide. Okay, so this is the first time as carbon dioxide is being released. And remember, that's where you're breathing out. You're breathing out carbon dioxide waste. Your body doesn't want it. You want to get rid of it. How you get rid of it is by breathing it out. Remember, this relates to the food you eat. So the food you eat is your source of nutrition, your source of energy, like glucose, for example, that's what we started with for glycolysis, is sugar that comes from the food you eat. Now that food that you eat, when you're done with it, when your body is done with it, it doesn't go where you think it's going, okay? That's the stuff your body can't use. When you're done with it, what happens to it is you're breathing it out. Right now, you are breathing out the food you ate. Why? Because you take that glucose, you convert it into carbon dioxide and breathe out carbon dioxide because your body doesn't want it. Okay, and this is the first time releasing carbon dioxide as waste. Now, since you took a three carbon molecule, and broke it apart into a two carbon molecule and a carbon, the carbon dioxide. What that means is that's a catabolic reaction, which means it's exergonic, it's gonna release energy. So it's not gonna waste that energy, it's gonna capture it through energy coupling to charge up some batteries. It's gonna charge up the electron carrier NADH. Then you take the two carbons that are left, combine it with coenzyme A, which is a molecule for bio one, don't worry too much about what coenzyme A is. You combine the two together and that creates acetyl-CoA. All right, so pruvate oxidation takes pruvate that you get from glycolysis and turns it into acetyl-CoA that you need for the citric acid cycle. Along the way, you release carbon dioxide as waste and you charge up some NADH batteries. Now remember, one glucose gave you two molecules of pruvate. So from that one glucose, from the two pruvates, you're gonna generate two CO2s as waste, you're gonna charge up two NADH batteries, and you're gonna make two acetyl-CoAs. That's pruvate oxidation, happens inside the matrix of the mitochondria. After pruvate oxidation, which is the minor stage, then you have the second main stage called the citric acid cycle. So we have pruvate oxidation that takes the two pruvates and turns it into two acetyl-CoAs. That's pruvate oxidation. Then these two acetyl-CoAs are gonna be fed into the citric acid cycle. The citric acid cycle is going to complete the breakdown of what originally started out as glucose all the way down into carbon dioxide. Now, since the citric acid cycle is breaking it down, it's going to be releasing energy. That energy, again, is going to be captured. This time it's going to be captured to charge up more batteries, NADH, FADH2, and ATP. Now, the citric acid cycle is also called the Krebs cycle. That's two names that mean the same thing, no both names. The citric acid cycle happens inside the matrix of the mitochondria, 
just like pyruvate oxidation happens inside the matrix of the mitochondria. Citric acid cycle, since you started with one glucose during glycolysis, it gave you two pyruvates. Those two pyruvates during pyruvate oxidation gave you two acetyl-CoA's. So from these two acetyl-CoA's, you're going to release four carbon dioxides as waste during the citric acid cycle. You're going to make six NADH batteries, two FADH2 batteries, and two ATP batteries. Okay, that's from one glucose molecule. Now, in reality, this is not the citric acid cycle. The citric acid cycle is not one chemical reaction. It's actually eight chemical reactions. So this would be the citric acid cycle. So it starts with acetyl-CoA, and you feed that into the citric acid cycle. Just like with glycolysis, there was 10 chemical reactions where you did not have to memorize all the different intermediate chemicals and all the enzymes and the, the details of the steps. That's for biochemistry, not bio one. You don't have to memorize all that for the citric acid cycle. However, you might need to know the first step. Okay, so the first step, what you're going to do is you're going to take acetyl-CoA that has two carbons. You're going to combine that with oxalacetate that has four carbons to then make the six carbon citrate. So two carbons plus four carbons will give you six carbons. That's the first step of the citric acid cycle. Two carbon acetyl-CoA combined with four carbon oxalacetate and six carbon citrate. The next seven chemical reactions, which you do not have to memorize their details, are gonna take the citrate and break it back down into oxalacetate. That's why it's called a cycle. The thing you're starting with oxalacetate is the thing you're ending with oxalacetate. That's what makes it a cycle. Now, since you're breaking it down, it's going to be releasing energy, and that energy is going to be used to charge up battery. It's going to charge up NADH, FADH2, and ATP by using GTP. Those are the details of the citric acid cycle. You don't need to memorize all the details, but know the first step. Two carbon acetyl-CoA combines with four carbon oxalacetate to make six carbon citrate. Next seven chemical reactions break citrate back down into oxalacetate. That's what makes it a cycle. But back to the simpler version. The two acetyl-CoA's are going to feed into the citric acid cycle. They're going to be broken down. As they're broken down, they're going to release as waste products four carbon dioxides, six NADHs, two FADH2s, and two ATPs. Now, glucose has been completely broken down all the way to carbon dioxide. But we've barely made any ATP so far. We've only made four total ATP so far. Remember, aerobic cellular respiration will make about 32 ATPs. So where most of the energy currently is stored is not in ATP. Where most of it is currently stored is in the reduced electron carriers, NADH and FADH2. Turns out your cells don't like those batteries. So then you need to do, after the citric acid cycle, then you need to do the third main stage, oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, that's going to take all of these electron carrier batteries and use their energy to make a lot of ATP. But that's going to be in the next video in this lecture series. So continuing with what we've talked about so far, okay, we start out with glucose. Glucose is a molecule that has a lot of energy. So how high up this is represents how much energy is being stored in the molecule. Glucose is a lot of energy. You take glucose and you do the process of glycolysis. Remember, glycolysis is 10 chemical reactions. Those are these numbers here, 1 through 10. Remember, the first five reactions of glycolysis are the energy investing phase, where you spend 2 ATP. You actually turn 2 ATP into 2 ADP. So what that means is you take glucose that has a lot of energy, and you give it a little more energy by spending these 2 ATP. Then the last five chemical reactions of glycolysis are the energy harvesting phase or the energy payoff phase. That's where you take glucose and break it down into pyruvate. Since you're breaking it down, it's going to be releasing energy. That energy is used to charge up the batteries to NADH and 4 ATP. That's why in net, glycolysis gives you 2 net ATP. The 4 you made minus the 2 you spent. Okay, now you have pruvate, which still has a lot of energy. Then you do pruvate oxidation, this light green shaded box here. It has three chemical reactions. You're going to turn pruvate into acetyl-CoA. Along the way, you're going to release carbon dioxide as waste, and you're going to charge up the batteries to NADHs. Then you take the two acetyl-CoAs and you feed into the citric acid cycle, this darker green shaded box here. 
Remember, that's eight chemical reactions. That's the numbers here, one through eight. You're gonna take acetyl-CoA and you're gonna break it down into oxalacetate. So as you're breaking it down, it's releasing energy. That energy is used to charge up the batteries. Six NADHs, two FADH2s, and two ATPs. Okay, so big picture about what we've talked about so far. You're taking glucose as a lot of energy and you're breaking it down to release all of its energy. That energy that's being released is being used to charge up all of these batteries, okay? Now, so far we've made barely any ATPs where most of the energy is currently stored is in the reduced electron carriers, which will be used for the third main stage, oxidative phosphorylation. But we're not there yet, okay? Before we get to that, again, kind of a summary, big picture of what we talked about so far. Glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm or cytosol, does not require oxygen, does not release carbon dioxide. It's made up of 10 chemical reactions. The first five chemical reactions are the energy investment phase. Last five chemical reactions are the energy payoff phase. During the energy investment phase, you're spending two ATP, turning two ATP into two ADP. Then during the energy payoff phase, you're making four ATP. Okay, so in net you make two. The four you made minus the two you spend, overall you net two ATP. Plus you make two NADH, plus two molecules of pyruvate. At the end of glycolysis, pyruvate is still storing a lot of energy. Okay, so that's the glycolysis step, which happens in the cytoplasm or cytosol. Now we're gonna take the pyruvate and bring it into the mitochondria, and we're going to do pyruvate oxidation where we turn, take the two pyruvate, break it down into two acetyl-CoAs. Along the way, you're gonna release two carbon dioxide as waste molecules, you breathe it out, and you're gonna make two NADH batteries, the reduced electron carriers that are storing energy. So that's the pyruvate oxidation, the minor stage. Then you're gonna take the two acetyl-CoAs and you're gonna feed them into the citric acid cycle which is the second main stage. Citric acid cycle happens in the matrix of the mitochondria, just like pyruvate oxidation happens inside the matrix of the mitochondria. The two acetyl coas are fed into the citric acid cycle. You're gonna release as waste four carbon dioxides. So now all of the carbon dioxide has been released, because remember glucose has six carbons. So you're releasing two here, plus four here. That's the six carbons that were originally in glucose. You breathe it out, because you don't want it as waste. Okay, then you're gonna charge up the batteries for the citric acid cycle, six NADHs, two FADH2s, and two ATPs. Now glucose has been completely broken down to carbon dioxide, released all of its energy, but so far you've only made four net ATPs, okay, for all of these steps here, four total ATPs. Where most of the energy is currently stored is in these reduced electron carriers. So they're then gonna be fed into the third main stage, which is called oxidative phosphorylation. Using the energy stored in these batteries, you're gonna make about 28 more ATP. But that's gonna come in the next video in the series where we learn about oxidative phosphorylation. So until then, this has been Dr. Sage.